for Wednesday, September 20th. Uh, we're going to start with the approval of the minutes of the last meeting, which was June 28th. Hopefully everyone's had a chance to review it. I'm going to get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Mike, a second? Second. Thank you, Dave. Any, uh, any uh, additions, subtractions to the minutes? Otherwise, all of the favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Uh, we'll move on to recognition. We've got several. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start with Tommy Allison Drini. So Tommy is celebrating 30 years of service and he's one of our star supervisors. So before joining CDTA, Tommy worked full time as a bus operator for a company that specializes in transportation for people with disabilities. It was a family member who suggested that Tommy apply to CDTA's star department in 1993. Yeah. So when Tommy began at CDTA as a part-time star operator, he was one of, and it says, if not the youngest star yeah. driver at just 25 years old. After becoming a full-time operator, the supervisor position <clears throat> piqued his interest and he began spending his weekends learning the ins and outs of the role. So Tommy says what he enjoys the most is our star customers, and he's developed long-lasting relationships with our star riders over the years, and he keeps in touch with some of his very first customers to this day as they continue to ride. Tommy said new technology allows for a more efficiently run production in star, and he, when he's not chatting away with one of our customers, you can catch him at the beach, he says preferably at the Cape. In his spare time, he enjoys baking and spending time with his first grandchild, a baby girl named Kennedy, who was born in June. Congratulations. Thank you. He says, though retirement is still a few years away, um, but when it happens, he'll probably ride off in one of his stylish classic cars, which have been a long time hobby for him. <coughs> so Tommy, thank you for 30 years and congratulations. All right, next up, Mr. Rich Nasso. Uh, Rich is also celebrating 30 years of service and is our superintendent of safety and training. So before joining CDTA, Rich was a carpenter but said he didn't like the instability of the job. So he came to CDTA for a steady paycheck after being referred by his dad, Rich Sr., who was a master technician for us at the time, and his dad actually worked here for 37 years. So Rich started here because he needed a job, but he says little did he know that he was actually starting a career. He started as a cleaner working at night. He climbed the ladder to become a mechanic, then an HVAC technician, then a foreman, a maintenance trainer, and then assistant superintendent of maintenance, and now currently superintendent of safety and training. He says that all of his roles as CDTA have made him a well-rounded employee. He says when he first started, a mechanic was just a mechanic, but now with technology, people are master technicians. And he said he enjoys the new and improved garage with better lighting and how clean it's kept. Rich says CDTA offers great opportunities to its employees and he attributes everything he has gotten in life to his work here, most importantly, his family and his home. And even his son, Rocco, was able to work here as summer help. And now Rocco is employed full-time at CDTA as a maintenance technician and actually just celebrated his one-year anniversary this past spring. So in his spare time, Rich likes to build race cars and hot rod cars with Rocco. He says he's not even thinking about retirement just yet, and he's happy to be continuing to work at CDTA and is excited to be more involved in management and contributing to the advancement of the organization. So, Rich, thank you for your dedication and commitment. For the celebrating 35 years of service and currently serves as our superintendent in our Troy division. Before joining CDTA, Joe was working in Cohoes for a meatpacking plant cleaning equipment. 
He says it was hard work and the hours weren't great, so it was time for a change. Joe said he opted for CDTA when he wanted to change jobs because of the stability it offered and the opportunity to start a career. Joe started out as an operator in the Troy Division on the 22, which services downtown Albany, Troy, and Waterville working nights. After 10 years working as an operator, Joe switched gears and was promoted to a supervisor. He spent 15 years in that role before becoming an assistant superintendent. He then went back to where it started for him and became, became a superintendent in our Troy Division. From there became the Albany Transportation Superintendent, where he spent several years before heading back over to Troy as the superintendent. Joe has not only made a career at CDTA, but he has also made a career out of serving our country. He's now a retired member of the Army National Guard with a rank of Command Sergeant Major, which is the highest enlisted rank in the Army. Joe responded to the World Trade Center attacks on September 11, 2001. He served in Iraq in 2010 and 2011 for Operation New Dawn as a first sergeant. In 2021, he earned the high honor Army Legion of Merit Medal for his service to our country. And some, some exciting news to share, Joe's son, Joe's son, Joe, and his wife, uh, Amy, are expecting their first child in January, and this will be your first grandchild. Right. Congratulations. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> yeah. So, Joe, we can't obviously thank you enough for your service, not only to our country, but to CDTA. Congratulations, and thank you. Thank you. So, I usually throw in a little tidbit or two about people that we're talking about, but... These are um, these are three exceptional guys. Um, Tommy Alessandrini is arguably the face of Star. Well, the voice of Star, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's like the chief problem solver, and honestly, just about every day something goes wrong. The service is totally different. It's as you know personalized, so there's, there's lots of moving parts. He usually puts the moving parts back in. He's worked here for 30 years. I've worked here a few more years than that. But it seems like every morning, almost every morning, I don't know, 6.30, 7 o'clock, we would meet each other. It, it got routine, right? Hey, Carm, hi, TA. The way we would go, you know, kind of like the Flintstones, you know, going to work. But, you know, arguably, you know, the face and voice of Star, you know, Rich Nasso, um, we think, is one of the only, you know, three-member uh, family. Um, you know, Emily's doing a story on that, right? That we, he may be the only one, but you know, his dad, um, I, I know his dad well. I mean, he was here for our retiree lunch. The guy was a you know, pillar here. You know, for Rich, it's been really hard because to be as respected as your dad, is, is tough stuff, but he's gotten there. He's done it. His son, Rocco, is, you know, I'm looking over the maintenance guys, is the new breed, you know, educated in community college uh, as, a, as, a, as a diesel tech. I mean, this young guy comes in and, you know, talk about pressure, he comes in, he, he is so good and so <coughs> smart that he just rockets by people. And it's, you know, he's now... He's the new breed, but he's got his dad's shoes to fill and his grandfather's shoes to fill, but he's doing it. Um, so between the three of them, I, I know they'll have 100 years of service. I just, I just know it. And then last but not least, if you're not impressed with the Landy story, I'm, I'm not quite sure what you can be impressed by. You know, the guy has been a rock here at CDT at the same time, you know, serving our country at a very high level. You know, this is not down here, so it's up here somewhere. Um, but, you know, he's a different kind of guy, quietly goes about his business, gets it done, um, has, you know, earned the respect of the people who work for him. Uh, you know, just, just a, I mean, that's, you know, that's a fine citizen. So, you know, there, there's a hundred years of CDTA. I never get tired of this stuff. I, if, if I could do this forever, I'd be, you know, eternally happy. But um, these are, you know, I know three great stories of people who make who make the narrative, you know, come to life. Um, they make us go. They're the best. Thanks.
Hopefully not going anywhere soon. I hope not. <laughs> they leave. <laughs> they leave and we're, all, we're in trouble. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item on our agenda are the committee reports, and I'll kick it off with the uh, Board Operations Committee that uh, met on Wednesday, September 6th. We reviewed the committee agendas uh, and activities for all the meetings here in the month of September. My colleague provided updates on the ongoing collective bargaining sessions with Amalgamated Transit Union Local 1321. We remain apart on key matters, mm -hmm. uh, but more face-to-face -face meetings are scheduled and we hope to bridge the gap during the sessions. Uh, CARM handed out a draft update to CDTA's bylaws that were last amended in 2010. The proposed changes are relatively minor and intended to make the bylaws a bit more contemporary in the use of pronouns and consistent with the culture of the company and its focus on DEI. Committee members were asked to review the draft, make comments and edits. Uh, the document will be circulated to the board for consideration at a later board meeting. Uh, CARM also refreshed the committee uh, with uh, updates on a variety of topics, including the Glens Falls rollout, Washington Western BRT, and the Gateway Mobility Hub in downtown Schenectady. All these projects are nearing completion with start dates expected uh, later in the fall. Ribbon cuttings, grand openings uh, are going to be scheduled. Uh, you'll find out about all of that as it comes. And then the next meeting of the committee is, uh, well, now it's going to be Thursday, uh, Thursday, uh, October 12th at 12.15, uh, some scheduling conflicts, so we push it off a day uh, here at 110 Water Elite Avenue and via Teams. Any questions about that report? So it was an all-time first the other day. I get an email from Jamie. I'm getting a lot more emails from Jamie. Than I used to. I'm not quite sure why. Think, 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 think. And he says, uh, since I'm retired, I thought I'd write my own notes. And he did. He did a commendable job. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah. Do the matter of baking cookies. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's already read the bylaws today. <laughs> and commented. <laughs> it's going to be a fun ride. Uh, the next committee report is the uh, Performance Monitoring Audit Committee. Dan Lynch. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sorry, I'm not there in person. Uh, in complete <laughs> disclosure, I did not prepare these notes. <laughs> the, uh, the Performance Monitoring and Audit Committee uh, we met on at noon on September 30, 13th of this year at 110 Waterville Avenue. There are three consent items uh, for consideration today. The first is an approval of the purchase of articulated buses. We need to replace two buses on our Route 905 BRT corridor as part of our fleet replacement program. Staff <coughs> recommends the purchase of two articulated buses to improve customer capacity on this line. We will procure these buses off our contract with New Flyer. Delivery is expected in the fall of 2024. At this point, I'll, I'll take a motion to approve. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Georgie, thank you. A second? Peter? Any uh, questions about the matter? Good discussion at the committee meeting. All those in favor of the purchase of the buses say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? It's approved. Going down. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, second agenda item is the approval of contract for our, the Rental Rail Station garage maintenance. We issued an invitation for bid for maintenance work at the Rental Rail Station and garage. We received three bids. Staff recommends a contract to the low bidder, James H. Malloy. Loy has worked for us in the past, and we were satisfied with their service. Chairman? Uh, can I get a motion uh, on this resolution? So moved. Thank you, Mike. Second by Peter. Any uh, questions or comments? Um, Loy has a very good reputation in the field. Uh, they did some work in Schenectady on its uh, garage several years ago, so they certainly had the experience. Yeah, they're doing all the, well, uh, most all of the uh, infrastructure work on the Line, the bus rapid transit line, yeah. I'm very happy with their work. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Uh, the resolution is approved. All right. 
The final uh, consent agenda item is the approval of a contract for Flex Plus pilot program. We are initiating a pilot service from the Rensselaer Rail Station to downtown Albany. We'll use Flex vehicles with a mobile application platform designed for transit connections with real-time feeds and multimodal journey planning. A sole source contract is required due to the innovative nature of this new mobility software. The committee has a good had a good discussion about this pilot program and agreed to move the recommendation to the full board. Mr. Chairman? Can I get a motion on this? So moved. Thank you, Dave. Second? Second. Thank you, Georgie. Bingo. That's all I remember from the committee. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> and he's paying attention. Um, <laughs> A little different. Uh, this is really uh, innovative software, an innovative software platform that will integrate, and Georgie, you'll appreciate this because you and I have talked about this, will integrate train schedules with uh, an on-demand service at the rail station. You, you know, quietly, we've really struggled with putting our own mark on transportation to and from the station. Frankly, I think we've not lived up to our standard there. Um, and as ride-sharing, cab service, and all other modes have sort of deteriorated. This looks like a really promising uh, way to uh, approach the issue. Uh, if, if the software works, you know, it might have uh, other applicability, particularly in STAR. So it's a pilot. Um, we've got uh, the routing company uh, lined up to do this for us. Um, they seem to be good. They seem to have this working in other, other parts of the world, uh, especially. Uh, not, not as much here in this country, but a um, lot, of, lot of hope, a lot of promise. Yeah, this is awesome, and yep. it works out, and we take it to another level too. I mean, it's great having CDTA provide the transportation from <laughs> right. from the bus, uh, from the train station yeah. to other locations. Yeah. It's just common sense. Yeah. It's good for the region. In a nutshell, that's that's the yeah. issue, right? It's twenty years. And it's, it's traditional, you know, traditional bus service is good. It's really not what people want. At least not today. <clears throat> Any other comments, questions? All those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. It's approved. Keep going, Dan, with your report. Right. We also had uh, three administrative discussion items um, that came from the meeting. The first is a risk management and workers' compensation quarterly report. Amanda Avery provided a quarterly review on the risk management and workers' compensation self-insurance accounts. The committee determined that both accounts are adequate at this time. The second discussion item was our monthly management report. Mike Collins gave the monthly management report. The MRT had an unexpected uptick in receipts at 16% over budget this month. Customer revenue was over budget by 10% this month. And rental raft station revenue was up 20%. Wages continue to be under budget because of persistent headcount challenges, and we are in good financial position. And finally, the monthly non-financial performance report uh, was provided by Chris Dasney, who gave the non-financial report. Fixed route ridership is up 18% this month and 18% for the year. Star ridership is up 7% for the month and 8% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance was at 70%, and star on-time performance was at 81%. As a reminder, a few months ago, we changed how we report missed trips from an actual number to a percentage. We missed 1.2% of all scheduled trips. Many other similar size transit properties report missing 5% or more of their scheduled trips. The next meeting of the committee is scheduled for October 18th of this year at 110 Water of Elite Avenue or on Microsoft Teams. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dan. Anybody have any questions about that committee report? If not, then we'll move on to the uh, strategic and, oh, no, no, to the uh, community and stakeholder relations, Matt Lance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I forgot you. We should, oh, I'll quit it. <laughs> the, com <laughs> the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on uh, September 14th at 11.15 in person and via Microsoft Teams. Staff provided updates on a re recent community value survey and the monthly earned media and communication engagement report. John Scherzer provided an update on our recent community value survey. 
which outlined how CDTA is perceived by the community and customers. TransPro interviewed more than 400 residents throughout the capital region in a random phone survey. The results of the survey were positive with 85% of the community members saying CDTA is valuable to the community. Community members believe CDTA brings the most value with affordable transportation options for the region. They acknowledge that we are an integral part of the communities we serve and would like to see that continue. 98% of those surveyed said they are aware that CDTA is the transit provider in the capital region. The top most important areas of service were identified as access to jobs, mobility options to low income families and individuals, and providing transportation options to people with special mobility needs. When asked, 93 of the participants said CDTA programs and service are a valuable part of the community with our universal access program providing the most value to our community, followed by the nature bus, CDPHP cycle, and our electric car share program drive. Jamie Caslow provided the monthly earned media and community engagement report. Last month, CDTA earned 20 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio. Stories focused on September service updates, changes to our flex service, the introduction of the new CDPHP cycle, bikes into our fleet, and the one year anniversary of service in Montgomery County. CDTA participated in a number of local events to highlight our work in the community, including the Unite the City event, Italia Fest, Mississippi Day, and the annual Carrot Festival. Jamie outlined social media engagement and provided st statistics for last month. We saw an uptick in followers across all of our social media channels. Top posts included how to take CDTA to Grafton Lakes State Park, hop on the nature bus, and the announcement of our new Navigator app. Looking ahead, we will host a career fair at CDT headquarters, CDTA headquarters on September 21st, kick off our Men Wear Pink campaign on September 29th, which will showcase our new pink bus designs, welcome back our fall festival after a three year pause due to COVID and host media events for the opening of our new Gateway Mobility Hub in late October and the launch of our third BRT line, the Purple Line in November. And that concludes my report. I don't know if there's any questions. Uh, what was the percentage, again, of, of people who recognized CDTA as the transportation? Uh, I did see that, 98. You would hope that would. Who are those 2%? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Mission not complete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were several references to the nature bus. Um, what went on with the nature bus in Schenectady since that was uh, new this season? I know it was uh, kind of a kickoff program. Bag over here. Yeah, we that didn't run very often. Yeah. Well, you, can one of you? Yeah, the blanks? bus ran three times, once a month in June, July, and August. It saw increasing ridership each time. Um, maxed out in August, we had almost 50 people take the bus wow. the last time. And we had a call actually with the Mohawk. Mohawk Hudson Land Conservancy this morning already asking if we're willing to return for 24 and how to expand. Awesome. It's got a lot of name recognition. But the interesting thing about it is not only is it su su successful with people riding, the, the awareness in the community is like sky high. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it's a small percentage of what we do, but it has this, it's like it has its, a life of its own. It could almost become its own product. And honestly, we, we get financial support to run it. I mean, we, we don't give it away. Is that electric bus over there or is that trolley in Schenectady? Mm -hmm. no. We didn't use electric, but we definitely believe we did use a trolley. Albany uses electric. Yeah. yeah. All right. If that's uh, it, the next meeting of the committee will be held Thursday, October 19th, 2023 at 1115. 
110 Waterfleet Avenue and via Microsoft Teams. That concludes the report. All right. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate it. We'll move on to the final committee report, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee. You're all presenting today. Try out. Exactly. 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 Committee leadership. Oh. <laughs> Jamie wrote my notes today. So, so uh, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee um, met on September 14th. Um, 2023 at 12 uh, p.m. here. Um, administrative items that were discussed, uh, the bus inventory and replacement plan. Lance Sarcone and Dave Williams provided an update on our bus inventory and replacement plan. The core of what we do is predicated on the safety and reliability of our rolling stock. We maintain detailed accounting of our bus inventory, which coupled with the condition history vehicles, employee feedback, and capital plan and F. TA guidelines is used to inform decisions on our annual bus purchases. Our fleet is composed of 355 revenue and 40 non-revenue vehicles, which vary in configuration, 40-foot buses, 60-foot articul articulated buses, battery electric buses, paratransit vehicles, flex vehicles, trolleys, my gosh, you know, likely to be more at some point as well. Our fleet size has grown significantly over the past several years due to expansion in Montgomery County, several BRTs, Albany, and OGS services. Our most common 40-foot fixed group vehicles have a minimum 500,000 mile or 12-year baseline for replacement consideration with other vehicle types having different requirements. When vehicles are in good condition and have acceptable operating costs, we maintain them or keep them longer. We seek to maintain the average age of the fleet at six years or less. Uh, this year, we took delivery of 17 articulated buses and six star buses. Next year, we are scheduled to take delivery of two articulated buses, 18 40-foot buses, six star buses, two and X buses, and a trolley. And we will continue to periodically re review the plan with this committee. Now, the next meeting is uh, of the committee is uh, scheduled to be held on October 9th, 2023 at noon. Good notes, Jamie. October 9th? 19th. 19th, right, exactly, because I screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> so the 19th, yeah. I didn't write the notes. Come on. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't write the notes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next time, I'll. Thank you. Hey, that uh, the, the fleet inventory and fleet planning is um, really going to be part of our regular. Um, Reporting, uh, we had done that. We sort of got away from it during COVID. Uh, we never lost our way. Obviously, you know, the plan is, is is still pretty much intact. But there's a method to the madness. We want everyone to know that it's not just you know, buying buy some buses this year. There's a method to the madness to keep that fleet uh, fleet age balanced uh, to you know, be considerate of the rules of the federal government, which you know tell us when we can dispose of vehicles, and to make smart decisions. Appreciate that. It's very uh, informative to folks who hadn't been through that yep. process before. So. Great. Uh, we'll move on to the CEO report. Yeah, thanks. Um, a couple of things. We talked about the completion of major capital projects. And I wanted to just remind everyone that uh, mobility hubs grew out of a, of a board discussion in one of our uh, strategic planning retreats several years ago. Chris uh, Destiny had been on an apt uh, study mission um, and mobility hubs, you know, were sort of the, the rage, uh, you know, where all forms of mobility came together, you know, buses, bikes, trolleys, you know, whatever. And I, I remember we talked about it. And I, I don't think what we have ended up with is what they have in different um, places in Europe. Um, but the concept, even though we kind of snickered, at buses, bikes, cars, because we didn't have, we were just starting out with bikes. We didn't have a car share program. Well, guess what? Now we do. And the Gateway, the gateway Hub will be the first uh, version of that. And then we have smaller hubs. Uh, I'm going to send you some, some, some sketches. We have smaller hubs are getting ready to go in, in Albany and Troy, which I think more resemble uh, what Chris brought back, you know tight urban neighborhoods, but uh, the gateway hub, grew, uh, the mobility hub concept grew out of um, strategic planning retreat uh, a number of years back. The Purple Line BRT will be the final piece of a 40-mile network of bus rapid transit. And I remember when we sort of latched on to 40 miles, um, 
none of us even could figure out like kind of how we added up 40 miles, but we kind of just we sort of sketched it and thought it sounded really good. I don't know why they didn't go for 50. But we said 40, and, and the board adopted that vision. And little by little, piece by piece, we've built it. Um, and the, the silver, the, the purple line, silver and purple, um, will really sort of be the, 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 the bow on the, on the present. But in my narrative, I, I kind of just want to repeat this because I, I, I like doing this. We're the only transit system north of the MTA with BRT service at all. We're the only one with a dedicated, that built a dedicated busway. We're the only one that was bold enough, Dave, bold enough to construct a roundabout. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure the transit systems, we don't do, they don't do that. But we built a roundabout uh, at arguably one of the most difficult intersections in the capital region. Um, so there's always go on and on and on, but you know, 40 miles of BRT will be um, completed in November. So we're gonna have to find something else to, to latch on to. We, we may have the possibility of one more, but that, that seems remote. So we'll have to take on some other big and bold um, service related project. While that's going on, um, our work continues in Warren County. I can send you a note, the governor signed bill officially uh, welcoming Warren County into our family. Uh, but all summer long, staff has been putting into place, you know, sort of the building blocks to, to get that done. We're basically um, supervising the operation behind the scenes. Um, the next thing that you'll see start to happen is, you know, bus stop signs and poles so that the community knows this is where you wait. Uh, this is uh, where you get a bus and it'll be the CDTA logo will then paint uh, inside baseball will actually be wrapped their buses in the familiar blue and I don't even know if it's yellow or gold it looks gold to me but I'd be careful and protect the CBA gold it's, I think it's yellow um, markings uh, and we're shooting for January for us to literally say we're running the service lots of hoops and hurdles it's really different than Montgomery County in fact we're learning it's actually a lot harder when there's nothing, it's easier to just do it. Assuming someone else's operation is interesting. Uh, several of the staff, Chris has kind of led this. Um, if this doesn't drive him crazy, I'm not quite sure what will. The FTA checkbox, um, the different things that we're required to do to assume the operation. It's the ultimate bureaucracy, but it's one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. But we'll get there. But it's, it's moving along with, there's no, no fatal flaw or anything of the sort. Um, as we reported in committee, you know, we continue to work uh, with the ATU. Uh, both, both sides have negotiating teams. Sometimes it's hard to fit everybody in the room, but, you know, um, we sometimes ask a couple guys to leave. Uh, and then we all fit together, but um, progress. Um, but it, it's slow progress. Um, I think we all want the same thing. We all want a quality agreement that's good for our employees and, and good for the company. And that's, <laughs> and that's where the balance is. Um, we'll get there. Um, you know, Zach is, is, is leading his team, and, and I know that Zach is committed to getting this done, getting it done as soon as we can. But it's a, it's, it's a process. Um, we talked about the ridership. You know, there are a lot of ways now that we're measuring and proving our success, but if ridership's not with you, um, a lot of the stuff sort of goes for naught, but an 18% year-to-date increase in ridership, I didn't think that was possible because we were comparing an apple to an apple now. And, you know, we're, exceed we're ahead of where we were before the pandemic. So we're now past where we were before ridership tumbled, so it's all good. Um, fall festival's back. If you, if you can be here uh, on that day, it's, it's, it's interesting to watch 500 school kids under the age of 12, you know, roaming around out here uh, with, with a lot of organization. Uh, Jamie Caswell and her, her gang do a great job, and the, the teachers and administrators of the schools that we work with do great jobs because they, they kind of know what to expect before they get here, and somehow they, they, they organize them. Uh, the pink bus pull, um, you know, sort of the showpiece of the not real men, by the way, anymore. It's men or pink. I don't know how we... How we lost the designation of real men, but we lost it. Um, oh, there we go. He's got that must be the Dan McCoy entry, right? That's great. 
Yeah, if you mean the winning team this year, oh, oh. the challenge has been made. Jerry, how many how many teams do we have? Uh, twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah, I had coffee this morning with the new uh, the new baseball coach at Siena College, who I, I've known since he was this big, but um, he's entering a team. I mean, the the, the amazing interest is. is I have a question for you. My organization is going to enter a team, and I recently found out while found out while trying to pull up a 20 pound anchor that I may not be one of the best people on that rope. <laughs> so how do I, how do I parlay this into my dual representation here? So I can, uh, Dan Lynch is a member of his team. Well, uh, <laughs> well, Dan Lynch is a much better person. Than <laughs> we all know that, uh, but I, I'm trying to think of a ceremonial position I could take. <laughs> so if you have any openings, you I can wear both hats. <laughs> all I do is blow a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it's it's a fun event, uh, and it, it it you know raises money for a good cause. Um, you know, <laughs> Jamie, Emily, and and Vanessa have they came up with an idea to you know get people to sponsor the pink buses. So there are awesome. there are bows and ribbons on the bus that are all worth something, and uh, the community has responded. I think over ten thousand dollars or so. Right? Sixteen thousand. Sixteen thousand dollars with that. So. Um, and our employees really like this stuff. Um, and, you know, we're always looking for ways to keep people happy. And, you know, a lot of studies are saying you have to keep them happy by keeping them smiling and engaged. So remember, smile. Um, last but not least, uh, thank you for everybody's cooperation on trying to schedule our, our date for the board planning retreat. I think we're zeroing in on a date. It's, it's the third, third week in November. Uh, we're going to bring Mark Ash back. Um, you remember Mark? Um, and we've done a lot of work with his team, a lot of good work. Uh, the, the whole story, uh, community value story, has really uh, been assisted by, by Mark's team. And we're going to talk a little bit about where we were, where we are, and, and where we want to go. Um, and if you know Mark, I mean, it's, it's five emails a minute. He just sent me four emails this morning about different ways to talk about this and different ways. So if... You know, if you haven't been part of Mark's presentation, I think you'll enjoy it, and um, it'll get you thinking. And that's that's really what we want to do because, you know, several of these things that we've reported on came out of board, you know, retreats and board discussions. I think that's the secret to the sauce. That's it for me. Yeah. Thank you, Carr. Any board member comments, questions for Carr or on any other topic? <laughs> I did take your advice, and um, I did go check out the roundabout. Did you get through it? It's hairy. Like, it was bad before. It's not much better. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was like everybody knew what they were supposed to do. Except you. Except for me. I never go to cross gates. I mean. Uh, we also uh, enjoy constructive criticism. <laughs> We it also nice, we could we could set up through our training department uh, a training session on how to navigate through a roundabout. There you go. You can do that. Well, I know how to do that for the most part, but it was nervous. We have good uh, attendance for the October third. I think it's the October third uh, railroad station. We do. Um, we're just trying to not announce anything publicly. That's a, we're having a naming event at the station. Um, it's coming together. Um, we're trying to not let it turn into a who's who in politics and more of a who's who in the community that really asks us to consider this. Uh, it's a bit of a struggle. I don't think it's gotten away from us yet. But it feels sometimes like it could. But yeah, it's come together. I think we're good with that thing. Yes. Time? Yes. 10 a.m. Jim, you'll send more information out in the next couple of days. Working on an agenda. And we want to be out of there in a half an hour, not an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not, that's not helpful, Dan. <laughs> Any comments? That's not helpful. <laughs> No, that that is some wishful thinking. I've never heard. You gotta set goals. We all thought that. Dan just said it. That's yeah. right. 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 Yeah, but if you say an hour and a half, then it's going to be three hours. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody have any? <laughs> Go to the order here. 
Uh, otherwise, our next meeting, board meeting, is set for uh, October 25th. It's Wednesday, of course, 12 noon, right here at 110 Waterville Avenue and via Microsoft Teams. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Peter. Second. Thank you, Second. Mike. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks. See you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I should have that.